Welcome to one more Flip Classroom Math video. Three tips before you start. First, you can slow down or speed up the playback if that helps you watch the video at your own pace. Second, you can pause the video anytime to jot down notes. Third, you can turn on the captions and watch my words go by on the bottom of your screen. All right, let's do a quick review of the three sections we covered in trigonometric functions. So first off, I'm just gonna go through the graphs of sine and cosine and talk about all the different parameters that we need to explore. If you understand these two graphs well, then all the other graphs are variations on these two, so that'll help a lot. Okay, first graph. This is sine x graphed against x. And sine x always starts at the origin, climbs up at 90 degrees to one. So the sine of 90, if you do that on your calculator, you're gonna get one. Then you go another 90 degrees till two or till 180. And if you do the sine of 180, you're gonna get zero. And so this graph tells you what the values of sine x are for various, uh, for various angles, for various degrees that you put in. So continuing on, if we go another 90 degrees, now we're at minus one. So sine of 270 is minus one. And then finally we get all the way through to 360. Sine of 360 is back to zero. Now let's talk about a few of the parameters. This parameter right here, the height from the, from the principal axis to the max, this is the amplitude. And we use the little a to designate amplitude. This here, of course, that's the max. And this down here is the minimum. We'll just call it the min. The period is the amount of time, the amount of x, the function takes to go through one complete cycle. So you can see the way I've drawn this, I've drawn one complete cycle, and that's from here to there. And that's 360 degrees. So this function, x versus sine x, has a period of 360, has an amplitude, in this case, of one, a equals one, and a principal axis of d equals zero. Again, remember, we have this form. I'm gonna do it for sine x, f of x, equals a times sine of bx plus d. Now b is the period multiplier. We'll get into that in the next board. Right now the period multiplier is just one because our period is 360 degrees. So here we have an amplitude of one, we have a d of zero, and we have a b of one. And so there is all of the parameters expressed in terms of the sine graph. Now, let's take a look at cosine. Cosine is super similar to sine, except it starts at one. So if you put in zero for your x, for the x value, and do the cosine of zero, your calculator is gonna tell you one. And as we go along, we get to 90. Cosine 90 is zero. Cosine 180 is negative one. Cosine 270 is back to zero. And cosine 360 is back to positive one. So this function behaves almost identically to this one. It just starts at one rather than zero. So in a way, the cosine graph is just the sine graph shifted 90 degrees. And that's really true. That's exactly what's going on here. And so here we have our max here and here, and we have our minimum right there. But the amplitude is in the same place this could be our amplitude right there, or it could be this distance here, or it could be that distance there. The amplitude is just the distance between the principal axis and either the max or the min. And again, our period is the whole cycle, which in this case is 360. And again, since our period is 360, then our B is going to be one. So these are the graphs for the basic function, sine and cosine of X. Right, we did a lot of problems, both in the exercises and on the quiz, where you were given a graph and had numbers on it, and you had to come up with the equation that would describe what that graph is doing. So what we need to remember is our form. In this case, we're gonna say f of x equals a times sine 
of bx plus d, where again, a is the amplitude, b is the period multiplier, and d is the principal axis. So I've gone ahead and written these out here with their equations. Now the thing about these equations is that they're not in the formula booklet. So you just have to remember, amplitude is max minus min over two, principal axis is max plus min over two, and then the period is derived by dividing 360 by the B term. And often the way you do this is you can figure out the period and then you manipulate this little equation to figure out what B is. Now, if you're getting confused about which equations and how to use them, you can get all of this information off of the graph directly. I'm gonna use these little equations, but then I'm gonna show you how the graph itself is gonna verify that I did the equations right. Okay, so first, let's find our amplitude. That's gonna be the max. Actually, let's just not write that all out. Let's just plug our numbers in. So A is gonna be the max, which is five, minus the min, which is negative 15. So that's minus minus 15 over two. That's gonna be 20 over two or 10. So let's check this out. That means that the amplitude has to be 10. So Here's our prince. Actually, let's do the principal axis first, and then we can check all of it. So our D, our principal axis, is going to be the max plus the min over two. So that's going to be that's going to be five plus minus fifteen over two. And five plus minus fifteen is just five minus fifteen. So that's going to be negative ten over two, which is going to be negative five. So D is negative five, and check it out. Here's my negative five. So I can write uh, Y equals negative five. That's our principal axis. And now we can check our amplitude. It has to be 10 above or 10 below the principal axis. And that looks pretty good. Here's negative five, go up 10 to positive five. Great. And here's negative five, go down 10 to negative 15. So that confirms so our graph is confirming what we've solved for algebraically. Okay, so now let's figure out what our B is. So period equals um, 360 over B. Now, what's our period? How long does it take to go through one full cycle? Let's go to the graph. Here we are starting at our start, up, down, to the min, back up. There's our starting point. Right, it started here, so it ends here. That's our ending point, pardon me. And that's at 1440. So we have 1440 equals 360 over B. So we're gonna divide, B is going to equal 360 over 1440. And guess what? That is going to be one quarter. So our function because often, basically, this whole exercise is giving you to write the function for this graph. So we're going to get f of x equals our a, 10, times sine of 0.25x plus, it's actually minus 5, because our, our principal axis is below the x-axis, and there's our function. Okay, in the last lesson of the three that we did, we built our trig function from data. So I've created some data here. I didn't invent a context for it. I just gave you data points. We have days going up to 36 days, and we have height measured as the numbers on there. And let's just say height is in meters, just because it's a good idea to show your, uh, your units. Okay, so based on that data, come up with a trig function that describes the data. Okay, now this can be a little tricky. First question, is this sine or cosine? So take a look at this data and tell me if you can figure out whether it's sine or cosine. Okay, in our example, in our work, we noticed that sine always rises first before it drops. And so you can see from zero to three days, we're up at 91, six days, we're up at 96. So we're going up first. So that's going to be sine. So our function is going to be some form like this. f of x equals a sine of bx plus d. 
So now we just need to figure out what our A's and our B's and our D's are so we can plug them in and we can write the function. So this time you don't have a graph already to check your work. Now you can, with the fancy schmancy calculator, you can put these data points into the calculator and it will draw a graph for you or at least show you the data points so you get a feeling for what this function looks like graphically. But we don't need to do that. And I'm just gonna do this algebraically. Okay, so let's do A first. What is A? A is the max minus the min over two. So what is our max? So you just have to scan the data there and check it out. We go all the way up, 98. Now we're dropping back down, 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 down to the bottom and then back up. So 98 is our max. And what's our min? Well, it looks like the min is 68 right there at day 27. So 68 over two, that's gonna be 30 over two or 15. So now we have our A. Now our D. Let's do the D first because that's a very similar calculation. That's just max plus min over two. So max plus min over two. And so that's gonna be 98 plus 68 over two. And I get 83 with that right there. Okay, so finally we need our period, right? Or we need our period multiplier, we need our B. So we know that the period, and check it out, what's our period? Our period is 36 days. It takes 36 days to repeat to the start. Because check it out, it starts at 83, it goes all the way up, peaks at 98, drops back down, passes through the start point of 83, drops, 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 all the way to our minimum, and then it comes back up, okay, so to our midpoint, which you can see is 83. Also, we found it on our graph here as 83, or in our math. So we know that the period is 36. So um, 36, I'm so, yeah, 36 equals 360 over B. And so we just swap and divide, and we're gonna get B is gonna be 10, okay? So now we've found our A, our D, and our B, we can write our function. F of X equals, what's our A? 15 times the sine of BX, B is 10 X, and our D is 83, so plus 83. Now, if you want, and I think it's a good idea, you can put this function into your calculator and check it and see what the graph does and make sure the graph does what this data shows you. Also, as a check, and this one's a little easier to do, pick a random number out of this table, like go, let's try 30 and put 30 in for X and do the math and you should get out 70 for your height. So if you wanna check your work, you can just randomly pick a couple of your day data, run it through your equation that you found and it should give you the height data that's listed in your table. Now, this example, I picked really nice numbers. You could see just by probably looking at the table that your principal axis is 83 because it starts at it, it passes through it, and it comes back at 83. Now, with real data, it's a little bit more sloppy, and I might not give you the days that show you the, uh, um, the principal axis, or your maxes might not quite be even. They might not be the same, things like that. So when you look at the data in the table, just be ready to make some kind of educated choices in using them for these equations. Now that you've watched the video, take a moment to jot down any remaining questions so you can bring them to our next class. You can also watch the video again if you need to deepen your understanding. If you enjoyed the experience, please click like or subscribe.